Hey everyone, I'm John from Open Work Labs. Today, talking about sending, receiving, uh, and validating or finding uh, Filecoin on the network. And also, while I was making this talk, I realized it's actually a good introduction to just working with remote file with a remote Filecoin node. Um, so, if you're interested in building uh, just any application on top of Filecoin, uh, I think this should be should be a good a nice entry point. Um, so yeah, just to talk about the agenda. First, we're just gonna send Filecoin from one wallet to another uh, and just construct a transaction and, and go through that whole flow. Uh, we'll then find that transaction in the network and make sure it's confirmed. And we'll wrap up talking about different wallet options. And a stretch goal would be to actually like look at some of the Lotus code so that if you do decide you wanna build a wallet or an app, uh, you don't even really need to rely on any documentation being super up to date at all times. Um, so to get started, it's a little hard to give a tutorial or like a, just kind of a live walkthrough without um, totally knowing where everyone's at technically. So these are some of the kind of like blockchain or network or cryptography terms um, that I assume people would be familiar with. And they're actually not Filecoin specific at all. So if you aren't um, and you're interested in learning more about these, you can Google them or um, just search for them online and, and they'll be, there's a lot written about them. So to dive in, um, the first thing that is important to understand because we're gonna use it a lot today or just in this <laughs> 20 minutes is uh, called the, the Filecoin JSON RPC. Now, um, just to get on the same page about like vocabularies and naming, um, Filecoin, it, you could think of that as like a, a list of specs almost, and, and Lotus, uh, which you see uh, right next to it in the subtitle, is just like the code implementation of the Filecoin spec, or one of them. There, there are hopefully going to be many. Um, and, and for those of us who don't know what JSON RPC is, it's kind of like first time I heard it, I was like, hmm. uh, it's okay, it's not that scary. It's, it's just really a way um, it, it's sort of an agreed upon set of rules for clients, uh, which could be like a web app or uh, another server to communicate with a remote server. In our case, it's going to be a Lotus node that's running somewhere, not in my apartment um, or on my machine. Um, and we do so using JSON, which is just like a type of data structure uh, or notation of data. So yeah. And also throughout this talk, like I do uh, simplify some things intentionally just so that for people who aren't as familiar, it, it might be uh, easier to kind of understand. Um, and after, you know, during questions, if, if people wanna, uh, you know, call me out on some nuance description, please let's, let's do it. So yeah, um, let's go a little bit deeper into Lotus's JSON RPC. So this um, is a simple version of a single Lotus JSON RPC method um, called wallet balance. And if you couldn't guess, you would call the Lotus JSON RPC wallet balance method, um, passing it an address to get that address's balance in Filecoin. Um, and so if you look at the bottom left, this is what a request to Lotus looks like. Um, and if you look on the right, this is what Lotus sends us back. Um, and you'll see like some of these fields are bolded. These are the things to pay attention to throughout the rest of like the slideshow. So I actually am just gonna like take out the JSON RPC and the ID. Those are things that are important, but not super important for this talk. Um, and so basically, Throughout the talk, I'm, I'm just gonna go through the steps to sending a Filecoin message and finding it in the network via the RPC. I'm gonna do that in slides first, just so people are familiar with the steps. And then we can do it live in a demo that, uh, yeah. So this is, yeah, you, you'll see stuff that looks like this throughout the slideshow. Um, and hopefully it, it shouldn't be too scary. And last thing is, um, you'll see here uh, next to wallet balance, like this is, what the request should include as a parameter 
to Lotus. So you'll see here on the bottom left, I, the method that I'm calling is the wallet balance and the parameter that I'm passing it, in this case, it's just one, is the address that I care about. And then Lotus does something with that request. It you know fetches the balance and it sends it back to me. It's a really big balance. Okay, let's talk about a message. A file coin message is just like an Ethereum transaction. Um, maybe there are some small differences, but I don't even really know them. Um, so if you look on the left, you'll see what a message looks like in JSON, which is how we send all of these, all the information to Lotus and how we get it all back from Lotus. And if you look on the right, you can see all of the fields defined. Um, one thing to note is that I sometimes use three dots like in the addresses here to truncate things to make them a little easier to read. And the second thing is that every value-based parameter in here, which is the value, the gas price, and the gas limit are denominated in something called addo file, which I might be mispronouncing, but that is kind of like way to ether. Um, it's just a very small denomination of Filecoin um, so that it makes a, it easier for us to work with small amounts without looking at decimals. The steps, okay, so. Hang on, sip of water. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get this thing called a nonce, which is like a unique number associated with this transaction. We take the nonce and we form the message and that message includes how much we wanna send, who we wanna send it to, um, and how much we are kind of like willing to pay for that transaction and how fast we want it to get processed in the network. We have to sign the message somehow. With the signed message, we can send that to the network. Then we should wait for that message to confirm and then we can go ahead and fetch it. So if that's good, basically I'm just gonna run through these six steps in the slides, talk about them briefly, and then we'll do it together in like a live demo so you could see it all work. Cool. The nonce. So you'll see the rest of these slides look a lot like that wallet balance slide, like I have, I put the JSON RPC method in blue, and then you'll see the request on the left, the response back from Lotus on the right. And yeah, and then that's, yeah, that's pretty much what we're gonna look at. So here you can see I can get the nonce associated with an address. Again, a nonce is just a unique number associated with, a, with an address and a transaction um, and Normally these are like sequentially ordered. So your first transaction might have nonce one and your second might have nonce two. In this example, the nonce would be six. So when we construct the message, we take, oops, we take that nonce and we just plug it in. And here I'm sending, what is this? A million, 10 million, 10 million auto file at a gas price of one. I'm willing to pay up to a thousand gas units or auto files for this transaction and the method and the parameters for just sending Filecoin are, is, are always zero and emptiness for params and that's it. And so um, to answer the first kind of part of this is how do I receive Filecoin? Well, um, you just plug that into the to field in a message. Um, as long as your address is the to field, you will receive whatever is plugged in to the value. So the next step after you have the message that you wanna send is to sign it. And you have to sign it using the from address's private key. And this part of the presentation was a little harder for me to decide what to do because there's many ways that you can sign a message. Um, and pretty much any wallet can sign a message. Like you could sign a message with a ledger. Um, the second icon is, is like from Lotus. And so Lotus has a wallet in it. So your Filecoin node that you're running has a wallet. Um, this icon in the middle is called Glyph. We have our, we kind of have our own wallets that are built on Ledger and Zondax on the right has signing lock. So these are just different possibilities of how we could sign a message. In this demo that I will show you, um, I'm gonna use the remote nodes wallet just because it's easy and it's consistent to use the JSON RPC for all of our calls. Um, and, I, and there's a wallet sign message, JSON RPC method. Um, now, it, it, in reality, it probably wouldn't make sense for anyone using like a remote dedicated node to uh, sign messages because that node would then need your private keys and then it's kind of insecure. So 
yeah, I don't know if, if this would actually be the way that you would sign a message, but regardless, um, it's the same idea. Uh, we, the thing that we need is on the right. We need a signed message um, so that we can send that signed message to the network to get processed, confirmed, and then you know, the file coin is sent. So here um, on the left, we pass an address and we pass the message that we constructed in the last step as parameters. Um, except I realized I screwed these up. I can just kind of change this on the fly here. I think it was like this. Sorry about that. And on the right, I just truncated the message because it's exactly the same as it is on the left. Um, but it also comes back with a signature. Um, and this is how the network can validate that I was the one who actually authorized this transaction or message. Um, so we take the sign message, which includes both the message and the signature, and we call mpool push uh, with the signed message. So you see, that was the thing that I generated in the last step. Um, and we get a CID, which is like, I'm, I mean, everyone's been hearing that today, but you, in this case, you can think of it as like the message ID. And now your message is in the pending message pool and it's waiting to be processed by a miner, uh, which is cool. So the next call that we can make, so, so just to recap, um, we just did steps one through four, and after we like after you do those, uh, you've sent a message, so you've sent Filecoin. Um, step five, there's a really so there's actually a, a few ways to to do five and six. I'm going to show you the ones that uh, we're using right now in the wallet that that we made, um, but I'll, I'll, at the end I'll also talk about some other other ways um, that you could do this as well. Okay, where were we? So um, there's a really handy JSON RPC method for waiting for a message to confirm. It takes a CID, so you just pass that as a parameter, and this is a simplified response, but once the message confirms, you'll see that we get a receipt which has an exit code which tells us, did this exit without errors? Zero is actually a good sign, that means no errors. It tells us what the fee we actually paid for the transaction was. And then the tip set, tip set is, is like a group of blocks bunched together. Um, and that tells us where our message uh, what can, can be found, I think, or some information that will help us potentially find that message in the future. And lastly, once we get that response, which we know once we got it, the message is confirmed, we can go ahead and find the message using chain get message and passing the CID. Um, and as you'd expect, uh, this isn't even simplified, sorry for these typos. The message you get back is the exact one that we composed in step nine, nine. I mean, slot nine, step three. Yeah, I think you get a point. Okay, now let's try and do this live. Um, I'm going to switch screens. Well, there's a lot of chat. I hope I didn't screw something up. Can I, everyone can hear great. me. And everything. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks for the encouragement. Okay. So um, I'm going to use a tool that is handy called Postman. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar, Postman just allows me to actually execute those request response cycles that we saw in the slides. Um, so it's just, it's a really easy GUI for making these requests. Um, and I generated a new address on my node. Like I have a, my node has this address in its wallet. It owns the private keys of that address. Um, and, and that address, if we look, oh, it, you could see, you could see my postman still. Yeah, we can see your param. Previously, we could just see the left hand yeah. bar. Oh. Okay, cool. Now, now you got everything? Yep. All right. All right. Make this a little bigger. So yeah, if I, this, this is um, basically the exact call that we saw in the example. Wallet balance with this address um, that my node owns the private keys of. And um, I'm just, I have, a, I have a node that is remote uh, and, and that's what it's handling these JSON RPC calls. So if I send this request, I get back a lot of auto file here, um, and that's how much I can spend potentially on, on a transaction. So if we just go through the steps, I have them here. Um, 
first thing we need to do is get the nonce associated with my address. So if I send this request, I get back zero. Easy enough. Now remember, wallet signed message, this is, this is a step that if you are implementing your own wallet or your own Filecoin sending kind of tooling, you probably, you might not use this method because this requires a remote node or whatever node that you're using that's handling this request to have the private key of this address. Um, so to look at this, mes this message, um, I'm sending it with a method of zero, empty params, a gas price and a gas limit, some value, the nonce that I got from the last step, from my address that I plugged in as the first parameter to the recipient. And when I send it, I get back this signed message. Um, let's make this look a little prettier. So remember, a signed message is both the message and the signature. So I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna put that into this mpool push method, which just takes a signed method, me message. And hopefully, when I send this, we should get back a CID. Nice. And this is the identifier for the message that I just sent on the Filecoin network. And so if I take that CID and I plug it into state wait message, you will notice it won't come back right away because that message is confirming. And I'm going to use this as an opportunity now to switch back to the slides for a moment so we don't just sit here and waste time and talk about other strategies to val validate a transaction. Um, so one thing you could do is you could use the JSON RPC to crawl the chain yourself and find the messages that are relevant to you. Um, that you know takes some, some more technical prowess uh, and the thing you might do is like start at the head and look at the blocks in the head and then look at their parents and look at their parents and, and inspect all the messages and all those blocks and any addresses that, that show up that are relevant to you, you can then capture or cache them or whatever you really want to do with them. Um, the other thing you could do is you could leverage uh, a block explorer backend API like file scout or file scan um, if they would let you. Uh, and lastly, you could use, there's a JSON RPC method called state list messages, um, which kind of like does the same things. It, it's uh, finding all of the messages associated with an address, passing like a to and a from param essentially. Um, but it's, it's not super performant uh, yet. So just to keep that in mind. Anyways, let me go back to Postman. Okay, so, and here it is. So it returned um, this message, which has a zero exit code. That's good, I can, my heart rate will like slow down now. Uh, the gas used, that's the fee that I just paid. Uh, and if I look at like my wallet bounce again, we would hope that this is much different, um, and it is. So this is sort of like what I sent, I think minus the fee, or maybe there's some other numbers in there, um, but I, I'm, yeah. And lastly, I can take the CID of my message and I can chain get message. And this should be the message that I sent. So it was from me to this address and we can just double check that. It looks right to me and yeah, that, I'm glad that that was relatively smooth. Okay, last topic here, wallets. So we kind of we kind of already talked about this a little bit. Um, for mainnet launch, um, these are the, the main wallet options that will be available that I know of. Maybe there will be more in the future or some that I don't know about. Um, but the, so Glyph, this, this Glyph wallet that we made, um, it works with both the Ledger and the Zondax signing library. So uh, it's, it's kind of like a nice web interface for, for sending Filecoin and seeing your transaction history. Uh, one thing to, to just mention is that if you're planning on accepting a lot of Filecoin, I'd highly recommend using a hardware wallet. Um, but if you want to just put like, which you can use with, with Glyph as well. Um, 
but if, if you are just happy to experiment um, with you know small amounts, uh, then you can use the the Glyph wallet to make your own seed phrase in the browser, kind of the the MetaMask like experience there. And lastly, um, just a note on OpenWork Labs. Uh, I like to give kind of the intro at the end because why would you care at the beginning? Uh, we're just a really small team working to try and improve the way people share, organize, and archive their work. That's how we got into Filecoin. Uh, like we're trying to figure out good ways to persist work on Filecoin so that we don't lose it and help. Uh, things like this presentation or this summit um, are such awesome collaboration and learning opportunities, especially, especially for me, uh, that I, I almost feel like it should be a continuous thing where we're all sharing our work together. We're all up to date. Like I'm learning so much like new things and it shouldn't have to wait uh, over a Zoom chat, I don't think. To, to get out to the community and for people to work with each other and, and not, not do anything overly redundant. Um, that is it, thank you. Um, thanks so much for letting me, letting me speak about this. It's been awesome uh, to work on it and I can finally like vent to all of you about this process. So yeah, questions. Awesome, thank you so much, Jonathan, this is great. Thank Love you. Love that the, the demo gods were, were happy. Uh, the demo gods are usually not happy with me. Well done. But, yeah. <laughs> you appeased them well. Offerings of a... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have one more thing that I want to show. That I want to show. There's yeah, yeah. one more thing. One more thing. Da, da, da. Okay. One thing that happens to me all the time, which is to no one's fault, uh, is that it's really hard to keep up with documentation. And so now I think if you were watching this and paying attention, you should be able to look at this file. I'll put it in the chat. Um, this is the Lotus JSON RPC. Uh, where's the chat? Here it is. Oops, that says line 57, but that line 57 is not important. Um, what basically what is important is just like how close the slides that I just presented actually like mirror the real source code. Um, and so if you're interested in building apps, um, yes, there will be a little bit of documentation that you need to get started. Um, but once you're there, you can look through all of these calls and you can, and you can now like decipher what are the arguments that you need to pass in order to make this happen using something like Postman or curl. Um, and you'll see what you're going to, what you're going to get back. So if we just look at like wallet balance, like the one that I, that I showed you, um, it looks really similar. Um, stretch screen. Why won't you stretch? Uh oh. There we go. Okay. Wallet balance here. So it looks very similar. The only thing that you might notice is that there's this context. And if you're dealing with the JSON RPC, you can just completely ignore that. It's not a parameter that you need to pass. Everything after context is something that the JSON RPC is expecting from you. So um, the context is totally internal to Lotus right now. Uh, so now you have the knowledge to use the Lotus RPC um, and build some cool apps. Yeah, that was that was the last thing. All right, I'm glad glad I got to it. Awesome. Looks like we have a question in the chat. Um, what's the incentive to miners? Um, it's a very broad question, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, think I, I don't think I would be the best, like I could give a stab, but I, I'd urge you to like maybe read the white paper, or the spec for that, because that will do a much better job of, of answering that question than I can. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of incentive that m some are similar to, other blockchains um, and yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'd look at the spec. Sounds good. Um, question from Joel on the um, similarities and differences from the Ethereum JSON RPC swap, what their APIs oh, look like. Yeah, you know, I never got too deep into the Ethereum JSON RPC, just the error codes. So the one difference that I know of is that the, the Lotus JSON RPC has like friendlier errors. Um, 
<laughs> that's that's all I, I'm sorry, that's really not that helpful, but uh, presumably like JSON RPC is exactly the same, right? Like that has nothing to do with with any, yeah, but but it's really just gonna be the parameters or the arguments. Oh, I'm getting the chats. Oh, thanks, Derek. That's that's so nice. Yeah, I'm 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 happy. I'm happy with how it went down. Um, Juan, which tooling do you recommend for pinning services? Yeah, that that's a that's a good question. Um, so this is this is something that I've put some thought into, and I I also don't really know how the current pinning infrastructures are accepting payments now. Like what technologies they're already using. Um, presumably like creating associations between addresses or groups of addresses and like web two identifiers or decentralized identifiers for that matter would be helpful and, and might be something that's missing right now. Um, so that like the thing that this presentation doesn't talk about is, well, yeah, I just found the message that this user said they sent, but like, who is that user? Um, and how do I relate? in a secure way that doesn't really violate privacy or um, other things. Like how do I make that association uh, in the back, in the back end? Mostly. Yeah. Right. You need, yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's a good question. And, and also I think um, accepting like accepting Filecoin should. So like if you're, I, I notice other, some services accept other cryptos and I wonder, I wonder how they do that or, or if there are services out there that are, that Filecoin could just integrate easily into, um, like Changely, for example. I think that there's been some talk about working, working an integration there. Um, so yeah, sorry, I don't have a, a better, better answer. Um, Stripe and ETH, yeah. Cool. Surprise! You can call the Lotus APIs. Is there any off? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there is. Yeah. There's a big catch here, which is that the Lotus node that's running in the background has um, it has a, a token that when you send the token along with your JSON RPC request, Lotus will make sure that you are the right uh, you you have the token and you have the rights to call these methods. Um, so the remote node that that we have deployed. Um, this one I'm using is, is like kind of public. And if you're here, uh, basically we have a, a proxy server that just injects the tokens into, re into requests so that it's really easy for anyone to use. Um, and we also, yeah, so one of the things that we worked on the past few months was like an open source Kubernetes and sort of like Docker tooling, Lotus node cluster management. Um, and so this is all kind of wrapped in there and, and there's some, nice security handling with tools like Istio that make this stuff uh, easier. Yeah. JWTs are access to? Yeah. Yeah, so a JWT, Right, so the, the Lotus node, um, you can generate, th there's some like semi-flexible kind of role-based authentication going on with Lotus. So um, you, there are different tokens that represent different permissions, like read, write, sign, admin, I think are the four. Uh, and, and so there's different JWTs that can fit each of those. So if, if I have a read token, I can, do I can make requests to basically like chain exploration uh, JSON RPC handlers, where if I have like a sign token, then I can do the wallet sign message method. Um, but a read token, I wouldn't be able to call the wallet sign message. And the, the token that is being injected is I'm pretty sure all this all access right now. So no, just just ignoring all security for the test net at the moment. But that yeah, it's, it's easy to kind of kind of change that around. Who signs the tokens? Yeah, the node. The node generates the tokens. So this is all built into Lotus. Any others? Come on, fire them. How much time do we have? 
we have uh, a 15 minute break starting in five oh, nice. minutes. So five minutes. Uh, you got, yeah, another five minutes for questions. Let's go. Come on. You're like, I'm not getting anything hard. Grill me. <laughs> no, I, it was it was either too hard or no. It's, I, I'm, no. I, I like the questions. Oh, it's sun. I guess I can show you. I mean, if there's really no questions, I, can you hear my dog? My dog barking. Just say nope. I can show you her. I could show you the Glyph wallet briefly. If I, I, yes. Let's, all right, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Sneak peeks, sneak peeks. Yes. Okay. Where is my, there it is. Okay. So I'm gonna give, oh, I'm gonna give you all a little Easter egg thing. The wallet is not like, supposed to be accessible to anyone, but if you just go to this URL, you can get there. Um, oh wait, launch application. You, you all can still see me and the screen? We can yep. see a screen, but it's an, oh yeah, yeah, we can see it. Nice, okay. So which option should I do? Maybe, maybe I'll use a ledger. Hang on, I'm unlocking my ledger. So, Props to, to Zondax who built the Ledger app. And here is, oh, Ledger only supports Chrome. That's right, hang on. Sorry. Switch share. All right, Ledger connected, oh wait. Oh, uh, I, wait, I shouldn't use a ledger. I, I'm just like in the middle of fixing a bug. Uh, I'm so sorry. Let me switch back. <laughs> Live demos. Literally the demo gods have smiled on you too much. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, 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 oh. Human level. Uh, so sorry, demo gods. All right, let me find a seed phrase with some, with some file coin on it. Give me two seconds. Okay, got you. Okay. I'm importing seed phrase. Don't don't do this, John. All right. Okay. So here is the current state of the Glyph wallet, and this is a, a wallet that I use for a lot of testing. If you couldn't tell, um, so it, it just kind of is like any basic wallet, really. Um, you can send Filecoin to different addresses. So let me create a second account and. Uh, all these, yeah, here, let me copy this account. I'll switch back to my other one. Send some file coin. I can, I can like customize the gas fees and stuff, but I'm not gonna do that at the moment. I'm here to complete, I'm gonna confirm and voila. Now my, my transaction is pending and Maybe if it goes fast enough, we can find it on file scout, but not yet. Oh, all right. Maybe we can find some other ones on file scout first. See if, yeah, that worked. So yeah, th this is the, the glyph wallet at the moment. Um, it's, it, it does its job. Um, and yeah. Any, does anyone want to see anything specific here? Like how much time? Oh, we got a minute. Any, any more questions on, on this? It's beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, you can tell from the slides, I am definitely not the designer. Um, but yeah, Alex, Alex did a great job. That, that Zoom elevator music would be great right about now with the pending transaction or some Jeopardy music would be, would be prime potentially. <laughs> well, Come we're on. officially at break time. So okay, perfect. more questions for you, they can stick them in the chat during, during this next break. Well, that reminds awesome. me. 